Welcome back everybody to yet another episode of Cartridge Talks. In this episode, we're gonna compare the mighty 300 Win Mag against the minuscule 308. That hurts my feelings a little bit. Uh, we are rolling. You ready for a clap? Yeah. You, re you all ready for this? Ryan, state your case. I think the 300 Win Mag is a fine cartridge. Indisputable. Utilitarian, powerful when you need it, but it might be a little too much. 308, portable, packable, affordable. Uh, I mean, you make a compelling argument, but the 300 Win Mag is the gold standard of cartridges. It's a cartridge that all other cartridges are measured against. From blacktails to brown bears, this thing will do it all. You check your tape measure. You know what, actually, I, I do know people that have shot blacktails and brown bears with the 308. Now, Ryan, before we head to the range, we need to address the firearms in the room. Obviously, these cartridges are very different, the rifles are very different too. So as we evaluate these cartridges moving forward, I think we need to uh, chat through how we're gonna do that. Sure. Well, let's let's take a look at the obvious. Two very different rifles. We've got an ultralight mountain rifle. We've got a pretty heavyweight target rifle. For these tests, we're going to establish a baseline weight of eight pounds when we're doing things like foot pounds of recoil energy calculations. We're going to use box posted velocities, ballistic coefficients, and grain weights to do all of our tabulation for drop and drift. We're going to try to make the data as even as possible across the board. We're going to be shooting into a consistent medium, permagel, while imperfect, it is consistent. It's going to give us the best chance of repeatable, replicatable, and efficient data output. I like it, Ryan. Now, I like that you're creating an even playing field. Yes. But let's face it. You're not right. Ted, check your tape measure. The proof is in the gelatin. Let's go to the range. All right, first up out of the 308 Winchester, we have Federal's 150 grain power shock. Got a muzzle velocity of 2820. Should be about 2532 on the block. Let's send one down range, see what happens. All right, this is what we've come to expect from the traditional cup and core. Good penetration, good expansion, looking at about 18 and a quarter inches of total penetration. All right, up first out of the 300 win Magnum, the gold standard of 30 cal Magnums when a person is seeking a little bit more horsepower to get the job done. And speaking of power, we're sending the 180 grain power shock down the tube at 2960. Let's see what it does. All right, very impressive for your cup and core constructed bullet. We got 27 and 3 8 inches of penetration, excellent expansion, great permanent wound cavity. No, uh, nothing lacking here. Back on the 308 Winchester here with the Federal Trophy Copper Load. You know I'm a sucker for copper. Let's see what happens. And per usual, massive penetration. In fact, 34 and a quarter inches of penetration. This is what I have come to expect, love, and trust out of copper projectiles. Massive, massive wound channel. Outstanding. All right, here we go with the copper counterpart. This is a 180 grain Federal Trophy Copper, also leaving the tube at 2960. Let's send it, excited to see the result. Not shocking, but impressive in the penetration department. We're looking at 35 inches, textbook expansion. This bullet did everything it needed to do to drive deep and get the job done. Welcome everybody. Let's unpack these two rifles. The first category we're going to look at between the two of them is shootability. And by that, I mean how controllable are these rifles as measured or validated in foot pounds of recoil energy. This is a calculation made with bullet mass, charge weight, velocity, and rifle weight. In foot-pounds, 
The 308 Winchester is coming to the table with 16.65, real mild mannered. The 300 Win Mag, in contrast, showing up with 30.2 and 180 grain projectile. Ryan, this is a case where more is not necessarily better, and the 300 is more by nearly double. But this is more like golf, where a low score means you win. And the 308 definitely wins this competition. 308. Moving along to accessibility, which we're defining as the total number of factory offerings offered by the six major ammunition, ammunition manufacturers on the market. So we're talking Federal, Winchester, Remington, Hornady, Barnes, and Nosler, right? The, uh, the 308's got 96. That's a lot. The 300, 61. Mm. Not as a lot, Ryan. Not as a lot is correct, Mark. Not as a lot. If we're going to get technical. I'll say this. The 308 Winchester has been around a long time. The 300 Winchester has been a long, around a long time. The 308 has kind of become a bit more popular for, say, match shooting competitions, etc., which kind of leads to its versatility, our next category. So within versatility, we're looking at what can these cartridges do? What are they built for? What kind of bullet offerings can you get, whether that be a full metal jacket, a varmint profile, you know, a bonded or a cup and core or a, a homogenous bullet design for big game hunting. Looking at the 308's grain weight palette, we see 110 grains to 220 grains from the bottom to the top, compared to the 300 Win Mag's 150 to 215 grain. For bullet styles, the 308 Winchester has 48 unique bullet styles the 300 Win Mag 26. Here again, we have to look at what the 308's been out doing while the old 300's over there bruising shoulders and giving flinches. Yeah, but when you're looking at what the 308 is doing, Ryan, it's doing different things. You aren't gonna take your 300, nor is it necessarily designed to be your everyday recreational target type gun. This thing is about raw horsepower, baby, and it's overpowering the 308 every time. That did not constitute a win for 300 Winchester in this category. In fact, the numbers tell us that versatility gives 308 Winchester the Winchester. 300 Win Mag fans, we tried, right? Yeah. Now, I'd say most critters get shot inside 300 yards, but these cartridges become a lot more interesting at about the 500 yard mark. It's time to talk about drop and drift. Now, the 300 Win Mag at 500 yards has 8.84 MOA of elevation drop. You have 3.52 MOA of wind drift considering a 10 mile per hour full value crosswind and it maintains 1,666 foot pounds of energy. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. What's your uh, 308 doing? Marginally less, Mark. I don't even know that the numbers are that important to talk about. Uh, for the sake of discussion, please. Okay, 500 yards, elevation correction requirement is 11.66 MOA. I will concede the 300 wind mag's a little flatter. And my windage correction, 5.73 MOA. Okay, you've got me in the wind too, but energy, well, actually, the 300 wind mag nearly doubles what I have. I'm coming in at 882 foot-pounds. So in your own words, which one is better? Well, wow, Mark, we really got to look at this like applicationally. It's don't beat around, <laughs> don't beat around the bush, Ryan. It's 300 win mag. 300, winner. All right, Ryan, enough small talk. It's time to take a look at terminal performance, and to do that, we're gonna need some gel. I hope you get a bruise. I hope you have terrible terminal performance. All right, first up in the lead category, coming out of the 300 win mag, the 180 grain. Power shock. Now, this is a very traditional cup and core bullet, Ryan. Uh, I'd say a very common bullet used for a big game. We're looking at 27 and 3 8 inches of penetration. A little bit of material loss along the way. Excellent wound channel, great expansion. It did a really good job. What, uh, what are you working with over there? Adequate, 18 and a quarter. I suppose that's how you use it. It's fine. It would be a fine, fine projectile for whitetail and mule deer and pronghorn. It, it really would. You know, I just really, you look at that great expansion, solid wound channel, ample penetration, enough to get the job done. It's just uh, the 300 got the job done more. I noticed that I don't have so much peppercorns uh, in my stick. You know, do you think uh, that is attributed to uh, the velocity impact on target? Undoubtedly. 
Yeah. Yeah, the higher we hit that block with speed anyways, the more chance we have of that bullet defrag or dematerializing and fragmenting throughout the block. Now, we both like bullets that drive, that penetrate, that yeah. hold together. What happened here is not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's actually fairly minimal. You are getting secondary projectiles doing secondary damage along the way, likely in that very important space within the critter. True story. I so. will concede, Mark, in this test, 300 Winchester seems to have um, put a little damper on my 308 Winchester Sunshine. It uh, has outperformed. But we didn't just shoot one bullet, Marco. We shot two. We also shot copper. Your beloved copper. My beloved copper. Let's have a look. Ah, copper. <laughs> All right, Ryan, speaking of copper, how'd your uh, little copper do over there today? A 34 and a quarter inches of penetration. That's impressive. Oh yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. What grain bullet is that? That's a 165. Oh, that's cute. Uh, pushing the 180 trophy copper out of the 300, I got 35 inches of penetration, which is more by a little, and I will say actually I am surprised at how much penetration you got with that projectile. I do like copper for that reason. It does penetrate really good. Big wound channels, long ways. That is pretty solid. You know, I'd say all in all, very similar. I will have to tip my hat to the 300 Winchester yet again in this comparison though, because yours is bigger and deeper. It is that indeed. Both of these copper projectiles show a notable increase in penetration, right? But I think we need to cover some caveats that maybe are associated with this style of projectile. I agree, Mark, they are, their, their success rather is predicated totally on impact velocity. So if you don't have enough impact velocity when you're hitting your target, like a gel block, a deer, an alka bear, with a copper projectile, you run the risk of not getting adequate expansion. Check your ballistic stables when you're looking at these. If you're gonna shoot the style of bullet, make sure you follow that manufacturer's suggested minimum velocity. I think it's definitely worth noting, but I think it's also worth noting on the flip side that I'd say in general, distances encountered in the field are gonna be within that threshold. Truly. I think we gotta tip the hat to the 300. Golly. I guess. Ryan, let's lay this one to rest and tally the votes. Shootability. 308. Accessibility. 308. Versatility. 308. Drop and drift. 300 wind mag. Terminal performance. 300 wind mag. The 308 wins by the hair of my chinny chin chin you stacked the deck i did kind of but we must remember that these are two radically different cartridges uh, a great example of like extreme polarity here on one side we have kind of the entry level big game hunting 30 caliber if we're going to chase things like elk or caribou or moose or large bears on the other side of it we have the king of the magnums 300 wind mag and we knew going into this that this would be quite a dichotomy right but the 308 will do the job for all of those things. The 308 will do the job, and in a lot of cases, will do the job better when it comes to, I think, more so the versatility component, the sure. target shooting, the practice, the things of that nature. But when you want raw horsepower, it's not gonna compare to the 300 Win Mag. I agree, I concede. It's not a tie. The 308 Winchester is still the winner, but and the 300 win is winning, just not as much, even though it's more. Right. So there you have it. 308 wins. Boo. <clears throat> that concludes this episode of Cartridge Talks. Tune into the Vortex Nation podcast where Ryan and I dive deeper into the gel and explore this topic even further. And I'll probably even dispute the results because that's what I like to do. And I will counter them with a more compelling and stronger argument, which is what I like to do. See you then. <laughs>